Orna Hannison, O R N A H A N I S O N. And Miss Hannison, where are you from originally? Originally from England. And who do you work for now? For GE. How long have you been with GE? Uh, just over 15 years. What is your position with GE? I'm a human resources manager. Human resources manager? Yes. And by GE, what's the name of the company? Uh, General Electric. Okay. I want to ask you about the year 2010 with okay. GE. What city did you live and work in during that year? I was in Houston, Texas. And what were your duties at that point? I was what was called an organization and staffing manager for GE Oil and Gas. What does that mean? Like, what do you do? Um, really around organizational development, leadership development, that sort of thing. Are you an executive? I am. Did you know the defendant, Hemi Newman? I did. All right. And how long have you known Hemi Newman? I first met him around September 2000. Do you know his family? I do, yes. Did you meet his family at the same time? Uh, no, I didn't meet them until they moved to the U.S. Okay. Now, at what point did you meet his wife? And I, I heard you say when they moved to the U.S., but let's talk years. Uh, I'm afraid I don't remember exactly when they moved to the U.S. My best guess would be around 2006, something, six or seven. I don't remember exactly, I'm afraid. What's his wife's name? Ariella Relly. Really? How would you characterize your relationship with the defendant? Um, I had been his HR manager for a while, so we had a professional relationship and we had become friends. Is it fair to say y'all were good friends? Fairly good friends. <coughs> what does that mean, fairly good friends? Well, I, I don't know the scale of friendship, but we would talk about families. We saw each other socially occasionally. Go ahead. Did your relationship include talking about your personal life? Uh, mostly about our children, I would say, rather than anything else. During September of 2010, did you meet with the defendant to discuss any personal business? I met him for dinner on the 28th of September of that year. And where was it? Where did this meeting take place? In a restaurant in Houston. Do you know why the defendant was in Houston? My understanding was that he was there for a meeting. A meeting with GE? Yes. Do you remember the name of the restaurant? I don't, I'm afraid. Was it just you and he? Yes. What did he tell you at dinner? Um, he told me, initially we talked about his career, uh, and then he told me about uh, his domestic situation. Okay, let, let's start talking, let's start about the career part. Mm -hmm. What did he tell you about his careers? He was somewhat frustrated that he hadn't been promoted. By frustrated, was he, was he depressed? Was he I mean, yelling and screaming? What do you mean by frustrated? Not at all. No, he was voicing the fact that he was frustrated and didn't really know how to progress his career. And how did you respond when he told you he was frustrated? We talked a little bit about um, what he could do from an interview skills perspective. Did you give him advice? In, in terms of how to come across in an interview, yes. How did he respond to this advice? He, he listened attentively. Did he appear to understand what you were saying? Yes, completely. Did he say he was going to follow this advice? He, I don't remember him saying anything about that. Is that the extent of your conversation with the defendant about his work? Uh, as far as I can remember. Okay. Let's talk about the conversation that you had with the defendant about his personal life. Mm -hmm. Tell us, you have to say yes or no, ma'am. Yes. All right, tell us about that conversation. He told me that he and his wife were having marital problems. Did he, did he elaborate? Did he describe what these marital problems were? He, he said that they, um, he was no longer in love with her. 
He said they, they had sex, they didn't make love anymore, and that she had, uh, she had spent a lot of money and got them into debt. But did he say or indicate how far in debt they were? They were? He wasn't specific about that. Did he tell you how he was going to handle his, the fact that he was no longer in love with his wife and they were in debt? Did he tell you what he was going to do? Um, on the debt part, he, he said that they had now, that they had then, by then cleared the debt, but he didn't indicate how and I didn't ask. Um, in terms of his wife, he indicated that he was considering separating. How did you respond when he told you he was considering separating from his wife? Um, well, he, he also told me he was having an affair, so it was all in the same, it was part of the same conversation. Um, I told him I thought he was going through a midlife crisis and he should go home and go to counselling and, and uh, do what he could to save his marriage. When you told him you thought he was going through a midlife crisis, did he respond? Did he say anything? He, he laughed. He laughed? Yes. After he laughed, did he tell you that no, Orna, I'm, I'm, I'm having delusions? Oh, no, not at all. Did he tell you, no, Orna, I'm actually depressed? No. Did he tell you, no, Orna, I've actually tried to commit suicide multiple times this year? No. He just laughed? He laughed, yes. Did he tell you anything about this person he was having an affair with? He told me that she was much younger than him, that she had two young children, and that she was Jewish. Did he tell you that he and this much younger Jewish woman had children together? No. Did he tell you whether or not he worked with this woman? No, I, 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 that was the only question I asked him. I asked him specifically, do you, does she work for GE? And he'd say, he said no. He told you he didn't work with her? Correct. If he had told you that they had worked together, what position would that put you in? I would have had to report that because it's against company policy for a, a manager and a direct report to have relations. And if you had reported that, what would have happened? You mean personal relations? Personal relations, yes. And if you had reported that there was a woman from GE that the defendant was having an affair with, what would have happened to the defendant? Well, there would have been an investigation first, so it would have, been, it would have depended on the outcome of the investigation. Is it fair to say that it would affect his employment at GE? If it was found that that was, it, that that was truly the case, then yes, it may well have affected his employment. Did he ever tell you the woman's name? He did not. Did you give him advice? Did you respond to what he told you? I told him that, I, I repeat, as, as I said earlier, that I felt that he hadn't, he hadn't gone to counseling, that he, he needed to go back and he should be able to face his children if he could at least tell them that he had done everything he could to save his marriage and he wasn't in a position to do that at that time. How did he respond when you told him that? He didn't say anything. Do you know the defendant's wife? Well, you indicated that you did earlier. Yes. Let me ask you this. Did you have a conversation with the defendant's wife at any point about this? She called me the day after my meeting with Mr. Newman. Were you asked about an affair? No, she didn't ask me that. Did you tell her? No, I did not tell her. Why did she call you? She, called, she told me that she was the one who had suggested that he meet with me to, to talk about their marital problems um, because I was a good friend and she felt that maybe I could help her save her marriage. So she wanted to know about our meeting. Did you tell her you would try to help her save her marriage? I did not tell her that, no. I told her that I had advised him to go home and go to counseling with her. Why did, why did you not tell her what Hemi had told you, specifically that he was having an affair? Uh, she and I were not 
the closest of friends. Um, so I, I felt that I would probably do more harm than good if he was going to go back and give his marriage another chance. Then all I could do was to hurt it more by telling her that information. Was there anything at all that seemed off about the defendant in this conversation, this face-to-face -face meeting that you had with him in Houston? I was surprised by what he told me, but nothing else. Was his behavior and his demeanor consistent with what you had seen for the last 10 years? It was. When was the next time you saw the defendant? Uh, I saw him again Thanksgiving week of that year, so November, either the 22nd or the 23rd of that, of that year. And where were you? I was you in the office. When you say that year, what year? 2010. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Where were you? I was back in the Atlanta office. I had relocated back, and he came, he came into my office to welcome me back. Why were you back in the Atlanta? I mean, why were you relocating back? I had transferred. I had taken another job. Okay, and, and was your position the same, or was it a different position in Atlanta? It was a slightly different position, still in human resources, but in a slightly different function. Okay, and this was November the 22nd or the 23rd of 2010? Correct. Where were you when you first saw him? I was in my office. Did you call and ask him to come to your office? No, he, I think he must have been aware. I don't remember how. I think I, I had told him that I was moving back to Atlanta. Um, so he knew I would be there. He just popped in to say hello and welcome me back. When he came into your office, how did he seem? Very friendly. Um, gave me a hug, welcome back. Great to see you. We, need, we must do lunch. It's very pleasant. Was that the extent of your conversation at this point? It was pretty short, yes. Did you talk about his living arrangements? He, t uh, yes, but I, I don't remember exact details. He told me he was living with, he had moved out of the hotel that he'd been staying in and he was living with, he, he jokingly called her his girlfriend. It was, an, a, a, I believe, an older lady living in Buckhead and he was, uh, he was living in one, of her, in one of her rooms. When you say he jokingly referred to her as his girlfriend, yeah. Was he laughing? Yeah, I mean, he was, he was, he was smiling, laughing about it, yes. Did, did he seem upbeat? Yeah, he seemed pretty normal. Depressed at all? Did not appear that way, no. Suicidal? Did not appear that way at all, no. At, at, at some point, after you and Hemi spoke, did you find out that Hemi had gone to the doctor or the hospital? Around Christmas, I found out that he had he'd been hospitalized. One of my colleagues mentioned that to me. Do you know what he was hospitalized for? Hemi told me that he'd been hospitalized for, for some severe abdominal pains and he'd had some surgery. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you could stand and stretch in my jury box, please. If you're in the jury box, you must stand and stretch. You may be seated. Did you speak with him when you got out of the hospital? I spoke to him on the telephone, yes. And when was this conversation? It was just before the Christmas break, but I can't remember the exact date. Christmas of what year? Of 2010. And can you tell us about the conversation that you had with him on the phone? I had emailed him when I heard he was in hospital to see if he was okay, if he needed anything, and he called me to say that he was going, he'd just come out of the hospital, he was going to convalesce with his mother, and he was taking his daughters to Florida. He told you he was going to Florida to convalesce? Right. Did he tell you he was going to a funeral? No. And who all was going to Florida? He said the girls. I, I assumed he meant his daughters. During this conversation, um, he, had, he had just gotten out of the hospital. Right. Did he seem upset? Not particularly. 
difficult to tell over the phone, but not that I could tell. In his voice, did he sound down or depressed? Not, not particularly, no. Was this phone conversation consistent with phone conversations you had had with the defendant over the course of the last 10 years? Pretty much so, yes. Did you have another phone conversation with the defendant after this one? Uh, one, one more phone call. He called me on New Year's Eve of that same year to wish me a happy New Year. See, that same year, New Year's Eve of 2010? 2010, yes. Did he call you or did you call him? He called me. And what was the purpose of the call again? Just to, to wish me a happy New Year. Where was he when he called you? I have no idea. You don't know? I, I thought he was in Florida, but I, I don't know. I'm going to ask you again, was he depressed? Did he seem depressed or down when he called you? He didn't, no. Did he seem upset in any way? No. Did he tell you that he had been having any delusions while he was in Florida? He didn't, no. Did he tell you that while he was in Florida, he had actually attempted suicide? No, he did not. What was his general demeanor? Was he upbeat? I wouldn't say he was upbeat, but he was fairly what I would say normal. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Peters, you may cross the down if you wish. <coughs> Just a bit right Oh, to ask as many questions as you wish. Ms. Hannison. Yes. Uh, you described the dinner yes. in September yes. that you and Hemi had, and that was actually out in Houston, correct? Correct. You had been transferred out there, is that correct? That is correct. And he was out there on a trip, and the two of y'all met? Yes. Okay. And <clears throat> during that conversation, if I understood what you said, he said uh, that he was having personal financial problems, correct? Correct. Wife spending a lot, correct? Yes. Um, wasn't getting the promotion that he was hoping for at right. GE. Um, worried about, I guess, the finances, correct? Well, he said by then that the, the, the debt had been paid off. Okay. Uh, then, sorry, then, excuse me. You said the debts had been paid off? That he had paid his debt off by then. All right. Yes. You may continue. Okay. Um, indicated that uh, he was having an affair. Right. And talked about the, how passionate the affair was, correct, with this... Right. Young per okay. And and in talking to you about all those different things, he was he was like all over the place in his in his behavior or his demeanor in talking to you, correct? No, that's not no. correct. Okay. Do you recall uh, being interviewed by the detectives in this case? Just within a few days of the time that that Hemi had been arrested, this would be back in the beginning of January of yes. 2011, mm -hmm. when you were describing what you're describing now to the jury, mm -hmm. uh, and Excuse you were talking you with you detectives. Yes, you have to say yes or no. Okay, the sorry. It doesn't translate very well. Okay, I'm yes. sorry. No. Okay, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. And and you were being questioned then, uh, talking with Detective Clifton and another detective. You recall that? I do. Okay. And you recall that when you were describing it to them, this conversation, you stated that Hemi was, quote, all over the place in his communication. I don't recall that at all. You do not recall I that? I do not recall that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any redirect? No redirect, Your Honor. No, sir. All right. All right. The lawyer has made his witness be released and excuse me for subpoena. Yes, Your Honor. She may. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for coming. Have a wonderful day. Drive safe. Thank you. All right. Next witness. State calls Jim Bono. Spell your name for the record. My name is James G. Vono. James J. A. M. E. S. G. Vono. V as in Victor. O. N. O. Vono. Vono. V as in Victor. Okay. Mr. Vono. How are you employed? Uh, I'm employed by General Electric. And how long have you been with, can I call it GE? That's fine. How long have you been with GE? Uh, about 14 years. What's your position with GE? I'm currently the general manager of uh, global operations for field services. And 
in short, what does that mean? What do you um, do? I run the organization that fixes power plants uh, around the country. Do you know Andrea Schneiderman? Uh, no, sir, I do not. Have you ever met her before? I, I may have, um, but I don't remember specifically. Do you know the defendant, Hemi Newman? Yes, sir, I do. And how do you know him? He used to work for me when I was the quality leader of energy services. Was that here in the Atlanta area? Yes, sir, it is. All right, go ahead. When was that? Um, from, I guess, 2007 through 2010, until I took the current position that I'm in. How much contact day-to-day -day did you all have from 2007 to 2010? It, it varied. I, I saw Hemi a couple of times a week on average if uh, we were in the office together. Tell me about your interactions. Would you talk? I mean, did you email? How, how did this work? Um, we, we talked, we emailed, uh, we collaborated on, on quality improvements and initiatives that we were working in the organization. Would you consider Hemi to be a logical thinker? Yes, sir. Would you consider Hemi to be organized in his thoughts? Yes, sir. Did you ever notice anything different or inconsistent with that? No, sir. Did you ever socialize with Hemi? Um, n not too often. A couple Christmas parties and then uh, one time after work. Let's talk about that one time after work. When was that? Um, that was about October 17th, 18th, 19th uh, of uh, 2010, I guess. And what was the purpose of, of this socializing, of this meeting? Um, I, I, I thought the meeting was going to be about, uh, the, I was leaving my position as the quality leader for energy services, so I thought it was a professional discussion uh, because he was interested potentially in obtaining that role. Did you guys have, did you and Hemi have any professional discussion? Um, very little, if any at all. What was the discussion about? Um, when we sat down, the discussion went pretty quickly to the fact that he was going through a divorce and he had uh, moved out of his house and that um, you know, he was struggling with you know, the children aspect of it. He had two kids at Georgia Tech and another one in high school and it was, it was you know, discussing that. Um, we talked a little bit about his relationship with his wife and the struggles they'd had over the years. And Did he tell you he was still with his wife? No, sir. He had said he had moved out and was living close by work, I believe. Did you ever have, did you ever have a conversation or did you ever talk about, during this conversation rather, um, an extramarital affair? Um, after we talked about the, the situation with his family, uh, Hemi did bring up that he had recently met somebody um, uh, that um, they were they were together, but she was married and had a couple of kids and was struggling with the decision of potentially leaving her family. Did he tell you that he and this lady had children together? No, sir. Did he describe her, where he knew her from, that sort of thing? No, sir, he did not. Did you ask? I did not. Why? Um, I figured if he wanted to tell me, he would have. What else did he say about this woman? Um, he had said that you know they, they were, uh, you know, intimate together. They were very serious. That um, he, he felt like he was falling in love. Um, that they had had, uh, uh, I guess, uh, made love, had sex together. That they had been intimate. Um, we use the term "I guess." What do you, can you? I mean, I heard you say, I guess. So are you guessing about something? Or are you relaying something you were told? I'm relaying something that I was told, sir. All right. When you use the term, I guess, what, does, what should I interpret that to be? He, he said that he had had relations with the person that he was with. All right. Go uh, ahead. Next question. Did he tell you about the sex that he was having? He said that um, uh, it made him feel young again. He felt like he was you know, back in high school. That. They were able to, you know, make love several times um, during these during these times. How did you respond to to that? Uh, I honestly can't remember. I, I don't. Did you talk about her husband? No, um, just that she was struggling with, you know, leaving her husband because of the children. 
when you say struggling, did he tell you that she was going to leave or that she wasn't going to leave? Um, that she wasn't going to leave. Does the defendant speak Spanish? Yes, sir. How do you know? Um, I, I can't recall when, but I, I had spoken and heard him speak Spanish before a couple of times. You speak Spanish as well? Just a little bit. During the course of this conversation, uh, did the defendant appear depressed to you? He, when we talked about the fact that he had separated from his wife and the struggles he was having with his children, he did, you know, seem somber or, you know, uh, taken back by, you know, obviously. Did he tell you he had contemplated suicide? No, sir. Did he tell you that he was seeing things? No, sir. Angels? No, sir. Demons? No, sir. No further questions, Your Honor. Were you his manager, or supervisor? I don't know what's the best term. I was uh, the cheeky talk. I, I was his dotted line manager, sir. So his dotted line manager. Yeah. So I was the quality leader for energy services, and he dotted line into me with all the other quality leaders of the business. All right. You may cross examine if you wish. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Mr. Trevano. Yes, sir. My name is Bob Rubin. We've spoken on the phone before. Yes, sir. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. Um, and in the telephone call, you described for me much of what you've described for the jury today, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you met with Mr. Newman uh, back, you said, October 17th or 18th of 2010, correct? Yes, sir. And that was at the Crown and Prince, which is a pub kind of place? Yes, sir, just around the corner. Okay. And sir, around the corner from where? Oh, sorry, sir, around the corner from work. Very close to where we work. From GE. GE and 4200, okay. yes. And, and 4200 is 4200 Wildwood Parkway? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you expected the conversation, the meeting at the Crown and, and Prince to be about work, and it turned out to be about something personal. very personal, correct? Yes, sir. And Mr. Newman had not had that type of relationship with you, although you had a good relationship. It was not something where you discuss personal matters very often, correct? That is correct. Um, now, this is October 2010. You're aware that earlier in the year, in 2010, Mr. Newman had had his job review, correct? Uh, yes, sir. And you didn't, you're not the supervisor who does the direct review, correct? That's correct. Um, but you're aware that Mr. Newman was not happy with, uh, with the review in, in some, correct? No, sir, I'm not. You're not aware of that? No, sir. Okay. Is it fair to say that Mr. Revi Mr. Newman um, received a review where he was one step below the top step on some of the values that y'all review? I'm going to object at this juncture, Your Honor. Ask and answer. Um, he's also asking the witness to speculate. He's already said he's not aware of any review. Response? Well, if I could, maybe I'll lay a better foundation. All right, I'll let you almost sustain the objection. Better foundation. Mr. Vano, did you uh, discuss with either Mr. Newman or his supervisor, Mr. Gebhardt, uh, Mr. Newman's review? Um, yes, sir. Okay. Are you aware of how the review, what the review was of Mr. Newman? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, may I go forward, Your Honor? You're right. Okay. Well, well, Your Honor, if I, if I may at this point, just ask for a point of clarity because if it's based off of what Ms. Gephardt is saying, it's based off of hearsay. If it's based off of what Mr. Newman is saying, then obviously it's admissible. So if you can clarify that in the foundation. I'm going to sustain the objection. Mr. Vano, are you aware from talking to Mr. Newman uh, that uh, his review was below the top level? I, I was aware based on the, the performance review that he received, yes, sir. Is that as a result of talking to Mr. Newman? No, sir, it is not. What is it based upon? It was based upon um, his supervisor's review of, of Mr. Newman and my assessment of Mr. Newman. All right. So in your own assessment of Mr. Newman's performance? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, um, I will let him respond as far as, as far as his own assessment, but not what, quote, unquote, the other manager may have written down or respond. I'm, I'm actually going to move to a different oh, That's That's well, what you can I ask what you want, counsel. Mr. Vano. In October of 2010, when you were meeting with Mr. Newman, um, 
he described for you the, the extramarital relationship he was having uh, with this woman. Yes, correct? sir. And he said to you um, that it was like magic for him, correct? Uh, yes, sir. And he said to you that, that when they were making love, he could make love with her two or three times in an evening. Is that correct? He said more than once, sir. I don't know if he used numbers. Okay. And this was not the kind of conversation you usually had with Mr. Newman, correct? No, sir, it's not. Thank you. That's all I had. All right. Any redirect? No, sir. Lawyers, may Mr. Bono be released and excuse me, Mr. Phoenix? Yes, sir. No objection. All right. All right, Mr. Bono, I'm going to let you come on now. You're free to go, so have a good day. Travel safely.